What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Tropics Watch. I am meteorologist Jonathan Kegas coming at you from sunny Orlando, Florida. We are always watching the tropics. The good news is, especially of late, there's nothing going on in the short term. We are not expecting any development. That is undoubtedly going to change. Of course, we know what's to come. The peak season, August, September, parts of October. But also, we're going to have some large-scale changes in our atmosphere, which is going to help to get things brewing again in the main development region of the tropical Atlantic in between the Lesser Antilles and Africa. We're expecting uh, some things to start to change, and I'm going to go over that in a little bit. If you like the content we are putting out, please subscribe to the ClickOrlando.com News 6 channel. Also, you can hit me up on Twitter at Jonathan Kegis if you have any questions or want to connect more. We post a lot of tropical stuff even when we are not bringing you Tropics Watch. And then on Facebook, Jonathan Kegis, uh, facebook.com slash Jonathan Kegis. All right. Mention it. It's quiet. But even when there's not anything going on, there's always something to talk about. Here we go with the tropical infrared satellite. Want to show you, we do have some thunderstorms out here. Lesser Antilles into uh, Trinidad, Tobago, getting some, uh, some thunderstorms, some showers moving through. And then we do have some unorganized shower and thunderstorm activity in the southern main development region. Keep on talking about uh, the main development region. That is this area right in here between the Lesser Antilles and Africa. That's where we get those long track, if you will, tropical systems in the heart of the hurricane season. These guys out here, I'll show you a uh, ensemble forecast. A couple of them try to hint at some weak development, some low chances for development, but really nothing to write home about in here. What we are going to turn our attention to over the next couple of weeks, it's going to be the mainland of Africa. The thunderstorms really starting to get going and then moving into an environment that will become increasingly conducive to supporting that. And I'm going to get into all that, the science of that, in a, in a second here. But really, in the next 10 to 14 days, we're going to start to watch that area. And then the first week of August, if you live anywhere in the islands, that's when I'd start paying a little bit of attention because that's going to be the first landmass up um, over the next uh, really couple of weeks of that first week of August. One of the reasons why, just one of the reasons why it's been so quiet is the Saharan dust. Another plume has emerged off of the African continent out of the Sahara Desert. You see where it's really bright white. That's where the highest concentration of dust is. But some light to moderate dust over the Caribbean islands, some of the lesser Antilles, greater Antilles of Cuba, getting into Hispaniola, seeing the dust. Texas, eastern Mexico, look at that. That brown color there. Some, relatively speaking, good concentrations of dust suspended well up in the atmosphere, thousands of feet above your head. But it helps to really enhance the sunrise and sunsets, likely seeing the good ones in Houston. If you've seen some really nice sunrises or sunsets lately uh, along the Gulf Coast in Louisiana, post that in the comments. If you have pictures, post that. Uh, let me know if you've seen those in, in Houston, Corpus Christi, Gain, uh, um, Galveston, almost at Gainesville. <laughs> We're on the Florida side of the Gulf. Um, and then certainly through the Yucatan into Puerto Rico, San Juan, we've seen a lot of the concentration of dust this year. Uh, but that's going to continue, and that's one of the reasons why that those thunderstorms that I just showed you are really not going to have that huge of a chance. Anything that tries to get going, going to ingest that dry, dusty air. We know from our previous talks that, again, that we really need that moist air. We need the not stable air that that uh, Saharan air layer, as it's called, uh, promotes. Getting into early next week, Floridians could see some of those good sunrises and sunsets. There's that brown streak again. That's some of the dust suspended again. Thousands of feet, when it, thousands of feet in the air. When it's really thick, it can mess with your allergies. Um, it does do wonders uh, to the Amazon rainforest as well. So it's that big catch twenty two. It also helps to enhance uh, some of the nasty stuff though. Some of that bacteria that produce those big algae blooms so there's a lot of good there's a lot of bad that comes with the saharan dust for the tropics though it's a good thing it really helps to uh limit the activity i have had a lot of people say that hey i thought we were supposed to have a bad year this year it's been quiet yeah it has been pretty quiet we've had had three name systems um 
but there really hasn't been much going on. It's supposed to be quiet, though. We're really not have we're really not supposed to see a ton of activity this is where we are on the tropical frequency map we're right there you are here where the arrows are touching that's mid-july this is what's to come though the heart of the season we all know it august september parts of october that's when things start to get rocking unfortunately in the tropical atlantic so there's still all, all of this to go that's peak season which is really the first week of august through about the first week of October, then you have that secondary peak that we always climatologically tend to see towards the back half of October before things really tail off at the end of the season. But we are here in the middle of July. So again, we always have the meat of the season um, getting into August, of course, September, and then parts of October. So yeah, that would be a, a letting of your guard down or something that's not accurate when it's a, I mean, it is accurate saying that it's nice and it's been nice and quiet, but that doesn't foretell what is to come. Those two are oftentimes not related at all. All right, so I want to show you, I mentioned at the earlier part of the show, the start of the show, that we're expecting things to start to turn much more active as the Atlantic becomes conducive. And one of the ways that we can kind of forecast out a couple of weeks in advance are looking at some of these charts. And what we're looking at here is the anomaly of the uh, upward motion. If you, you need to get rising air at the surface, this is going to be upper level divergence. When air rises at the surface, it diverges up top. You got to complete that circulation. Uh, this is from tropicaltidbits.com. Great resource if you like to track the tropics. Um, also, some you can follow the recon missions in here. So love this site. I mentioned before that the Saharan dust was just one of the pieces of the puzzle, keeping the tropics quiet. But really, we've been in this suppressed phase of something that is known as the Madden-Julian oscillation. It's an oscillation that's kind of similar to El Nino and La Nina, how it goes back and forth, but it's on a much smaller scale, uh, both time and space. Um, where you're seeing this brown color here is sinking air at the surface. You see my little mouse there, and we've been under the influence of that sinking air it's been promoting quiet weather in the tropics so uh when we talked several weeks ago we talked about that we were likely going to be in a huge lull of action in the tropics and we have now we're expecting it to go back to the other direction so this is now fast forwarding towards uh the 23rd of july note this green this is africa over here so here's the united states here's the caribbean if you can see my mouse there are the lesser antilles this is the uh, the western side of Africa. Here's most of the African continent. Notice how that's starting to light up as green. When it's like, okay, well, why does green over Africa matter? What this is, is again, the rising motion over Africa. When we're looking at the green, that's when the anomaly is, the darker the green, the bigger the anomaly for rising motion. Where that green is, that's going to promote rising air, which then promotes thunderstorms. So as we fast forward towards july 30th so this is now the last few days of july getting into august look at this look at the anomaly here for rising motion really starts to increase okay over africa and then there are the cabo cabo verde island archipelago there is western africa so what this says to us is that there is going to be an increase in thunderstorm activity over africa well, that's the first ingredient you need to get tropical activity. You need the thunderstorms to start rolling. And then that's going to be something that continues. Here we go, August 6th for that week. And then it looks like we might ha try to have things pipe down a little bit. Now, the response to the increased upward motion isn't instantaneous. There's a little bit of lag here. So when we go back and look and say that, okay, there we go on July 23rd. Really, that last week of July is likely going to be the transition period from a more hostile Atlantic where it does not promote increased activity or promote tropical cyclone activity. And then really, there's July 30th again where that big bright green bullseye is over Africa. So it may take some time 
a few days into August before we really start to see this uh, come into fruition because there's that lag period as we, again, start to see things change for the worse for us, the better for tropical systems. And then again, that may be something that lasts through the mid to late August because then there's that lag period of things quieting back down again. So typically though it's that time climatologically that we do start to look for those um, storms rolling off of Africa. I want to show you another site here. This is uh, weathernerds.org, another great site. The Euro Ensembles try to bite on this as well towards the end of July. Uh, we've talked about in the past Ensemble Forecast. It's a great tool to use when there's really nothing developed because it puts in a different number of initial conditions to kind of tweak the environment a little bit so it helps kind of gauge on what if anything could develop or where it could go because it uses initial conditions and rather than focusing on one model uh right here remember i showed you those the satellite of those uh thunderstorms out at sea this is some of the euro ensembles trying to bite on that a little bit over the next few days you see those l's kind of go away quick the environment is hostile. It's very dry and dusty out there because of that Saharan air layer. So again, not too concerned with those out there. If you're watching from the islands, could have some scattered showers and thunderstorms, but there's nothing going to be organized uh, coming your way in the short term. So that's 48 hours. That, that, that takes us through about the 19th or 20th of July. I'm going to quickly fast forward here and look at this real quick. There's more stuff going on in the Eastern Pacific that's been the basin that's been lighting up and again they can have that it's been nice hurricanes to watch it they have not hit anything um that's when the tropics are awesome in my opinion hopefully everybody's opinion when they just do their thing out in the middle of the atlantic they're not hurting any ships they're not hurting any land of course but they are magnificent to watch on satellite and hopefully that's a year we have the year of the fish storm that'd be nice um don't know if that's going to be the case though here we go forward in time and imagine as we get closer to the end of July, notice these little L's starting to pop up. So this is the European Ensemble trying to hint at those thunderstorms coming our way. And there we go as we get towards uh, that July 24th. Um, and then we start to get more L's. Look at that. And again, this is the... Not all of these L's are tropical systems either. You're looking for the cluster. So when you see all those L's, don't freak out that we're going to have all of these things start rolling off of Africa. Um... But what we have here is a little cluster here, another little cluster here. So maybe a couple of things trying to roll off of Africa with the shot of development as we go through the last few days of July. So again, just keep that in mind. That's something that we're going to be watching again. Our, our antennas are going to be up, if you will. Because it again is also going to coincide with the climatological area that we would tend to see. Now, all these little lines you see here, these are the historical tracks going back to 1950 for the origins getting into August. And you see there, as we get deeper into August, this is where we tend to see things develop. There's your main development region. You've got some stuff in the Caribbean. But those homegrown storms for the United States really start to wind down. Cold fronts really don't make it as far south anymore as we get into August. Um, so we don't have those dying fronts with the thunderstorms in there to try to like develop anything close to home. It's all deep tropics in origin for the most part, way out in the main development region, maybe some junk in the Caribbean, but a lot of it's happening out here, either coming towards the islands or curving out. And we hope it's the latter, of course, and curving out. And again, to kind of get all that noise out of there, because there were a lot of lines I just showed you. That's where our, our main focus goes towards anyway. And again, it's never a good thing when you have large-scale meteorological features coming into play, like that Madden-Julian oscillation pulse, if you will, to help kind of give an oomph to those thunderstorms uh, and to help to increase that thunderstorm activity and to make the Atlantic a little more conducive meeting up with climatology and that's what we have here in terms of the list again there's the recap so far not really a recap we're not done yet i wish we were done but where we stand so far three named storms alex bonnie and colin the next one up is danielle hopefully we don't meet these next ones for a very very long time 
it'd be nice if they don't get going. Again, there's a lot more to this than just the thunderstorm activity. A lot needs to come into play to get these storms. But we do think over the next uh, couple of weeks, the Atlantic is going to take a turn. Again, it, it's going to match up with climato climatology. It's a hard word to say when you don't have coffee. But climatology meeting the large-scale forcing features, that's what we are going to be watching uh, over the next couple of weeks. End of July and through the first couple of weeks of August, likely going to have a significant uptick. And really, the on switch is going to turn on uh, to the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Alrighty, guys, that does it for this edition of Tropics Watch. Again, if you like the content we are putting out, please subscribe. Please like this channel. Hit the little bell that pops up. That will uh, give you alerts anytime that we post news con new content on the new six. Click Orlando.com page. And if you have any questions, of course, you can post them in the comments. Or you can hit me up on Twitter at Jonathan Kegis or Facebook.com slash Jonathan Kegis. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Talk to you soon.